Hi, this is William Ramsey. Welcome to William Ramsey Investigates. Today is March 28th, and there's been just more updates, incredible updates in this whole disappearance and water death of Riley Strain that fits the Smiley Face Killers profile exactly. And what they found out is after the discovery on Friday, right, last Friday, uh, that he was found without his pants, his cowboy boots, his wallet, or his phone. And they told the people there's nothing to suggest foul play. Like, we're going to watch the, po the Nashville police chief, Blake, state nothing we saw right at the scene suggested foul play. He was just in the water for two weeks, missing after a full search, and then ends up just with his shirt. So they obfuscated some of these facts. And it's incredible. It's very similar to the Dakota James case. So we'll go into that. And I've got a bunch of slides, a bunch of videos for analysis. And it's just an embarrassment. Like, And some of these anal analysts are just uh, explaining this away. They're explaining away that a guy is found without his pants and boots after disappearing, like literally disappearing. So nobody found his pants or boots, right? So they're not, they're not just missing from his body. They are missing, like disappeared. So did he go through some kind of time portal? Like that's the kind of kooky stuff. So they found his bank card, right? But they couldn't find his boots. Like, did he go down? Like, these are mysteries. These are so important. And the, the, the reporting is sloppy. So, I mean, it's just incredible to watch this. And some of these spe specialists and things like that are, in my opinion, destroying their reputations by not doing... Uh, even a cursory job on this. This is off the charts. So the family is going through the same process that the family of Dakota James, and they've decided to hire their own uh, autopsy person. And now it's being reported all throughout the media. And we'll see this on these um, screenshots that I've got, that there's problems with the autopsy. And that's great. I've never seen that because usually it takes a long time to figure that out either the autopsy is delayed or they don't go into it or something like this and so welcome everybody this case is is the most one of the most important cases in all the cases that i've studied right i've studied over 300 my newest book was out in september for people who don't know it's smiley face Kill. studying college age men this college age guy disappears right so it's just this specific phenomenon they got the name Smiley Face Killers from Gilbertson and Gannon, who associated kind of the smiley face with some of the deaths that they saw. So it's kind of stuck, but we can call it the phenomenon of young men coming out of bars and literally disappearing, like disappearing for days. Dakota King James was missing 40 days. We'll show a picture. It's a very graphic picture of him, but he was clearly not in the water 40 days. And they don't have ever state anything about... Riley Strain's body, right? Rest in peace, Riley. But uh, they don't state the nature of his, but they should have said it looked like he was 14, but they were able to recognize him. Well, uh, there's always like a lot of variables. How cold is the water? But why wasn't he found? How did he travel that eight miles, right? Most of these bodies are usually found very close to where they go, supposedly go in, right? But he probably didn't go in there. That's the whole thing is he didn't go in where he was, uh, he supposedly disappeared. So I'm going to play some, some videos with some comment. Exactly. This is the 911 call. This is from the business where he was found and I'll go into the business as well. Location of your emergency. Yes, ma'am. I'm at 1740, uh, 61st Avenue North, Nashville, Tennessee. Um, I, I just 61st Avenue North in the nation's office of Daniel. Yes, ma'am. Okay. And what happened? Uh, uh, my company works on the river. I have just found a uh, dead body. I believe it to be Riley. Okay. And you said you guys found a dead body? Yes, ma'am, in the river. We are no barges at this facility, and I was like? checking around my dock. Uh, it's definitely got a person hair, black shirt, kind of like a white, muddy looking on the front. It's face it's down in the water. Shirt. Yes, ma'am. It's, it's a, Caucasian. 
it looks like a male? Yes, ma'am. Okay. You kind of wonder who they hired to take these calls. Is he right on the, like, the, um, what is it called? Yeah, he's on the front of my, uh, work barge. Uh, I'm at River Marker 184 on the Cumberland River. You said River Marker 184? Yes, ma'am. Okay, give me one second. And my company has requested only uh, police and rescue personnel only on site. All right, so I already have this call up. Um, I have it at 1740, 61, 60, I'm sorry, 61st Avenue North in the nation's office centennial. What is the name of this? Is there a name on the building or? Yeah, it's a, there's a sign out front. It's uh, Holson. You said Holston, H L. Yeah, it's Holston, H O L C I N. O L S T O N. H O L C I M. Okay. Well, is he completely submerged, or is he right on that, like the the bed? Not the bed, but like, is he partially in the water, partially out of the water? No, he's he's fully submerged. Besides his his uh, back sticking out of the water. I actually had to move a log off of it off of the head to confirm it was a body. Okay. I have this call up and I'm gonna get somebody out there, okay? So then you have it established that he was found at this wholesome H O L C I M is the name of the place. And it is downriver eight miles. We have some new details kind of tonight in the death of he was down under eight miles from where he supposedly went in. Recognizable face down, which I think is normal. And then they found out not only was his cowboy pants, his pants and cowboy boots and phone missing and wallet. Um, he had air in his lungs, right? Which is not consistent with drowning. And all these people who comment on these cases are rationalizing that way. Oh, he had lin lingerial spasms and that's it so you can just see these rationalizations to confirm their already made conclusion that he slipped and fell and drowned right because they can't figure out they can't make that step to abduction uh somebody holding him maybe torturing him and putting him in water later and there's like i said there's no real statement on the state of his body like they found his body but what is it and i think that the I think the Blake, the chief of police, is, is definitely in, engaged in a cover-up, in my opinion. Riley Strain, the story of his disappearance captured the attention of people all across this country. This morning, Metro Police released the 911 call from the barge worker who found the 22-year-old's body in the Cumberland River. Many questions are still unanswered. The cause of the young man's death is still under investigation. Nick Barris has more details. Riley Strain's body was found in the Cumberland River, and the assumption is that he drowned, but we won't know for certain until the autopsy is completed here at the medical examiner's office. The autopsy, of course, was only made possible after a river worker spotted the body in the Cumberland two weeks after Strain disappeared in downtown Nashville. My company works on the river. I have just found a uh, dead body. I believe it to be Riley. This was about eight miles downriver from where Strain was last seen alive. It's definitely got a person hair, black shirt, kind of like a white, muddy looking on the front. It's face down in the water. Shirt. I actually had to move a log off of, it, off of the head to confirm it was a body. So how and why did Strain end up in the river? The preliminary autopsy report confirms what Metro Police Chief John Drake said, that there appears to be no evidence of foul play, and it looks... Right, so John Drake is saying there's no evidence of foul play, but his pants, his boots, his phone, and his wallet are missing. Right. And he's been missing for 14 days, and nobody saw him go in the water. 
So what's your definition of evidence? To be a horrible accident. We don't yet know <coughs> if water was found in Strain's lungs. Some suggest well, they the found nine. out they found out that there was water in his lungs so i mean there was air in his lungs no water and look at this river i mean you can see this river some people say it's a strong current i feel like i could swim even at my age i could swim across that and back and was dead before he went into the river but the medical examiner tells me that is not definitive a person struggling to breathe underwater can have a throat spasm that shuts off your airway when that happens no water goes into your lungs and it's known as dry drowning but that is only part of the medical examiner's investigation i think somebody said like dry drowning is like one or two less than two percent of all drowning so-called drowning so it's very small they will also be testing strain's <clears throat> blood security video did show strain stumbling the night he disappeared now metro police have viewed videos from bars strain visited and say there appears to be no evidence he was drugged but toxicology tests Desert Rain, you say the girls who found the debit card knew was missing his boots before his body was found. How is that? Is there a statement? Or is there something that you can send me by email? William Ramsey investigates at proton uh, protonmail.com. If that's true, that's remarkable. Testing will be done to check his blood alcohol level and to see if there were any other drugs present. So for now, no clear evidence of foul play in Strain's death, though that could potentially change depending on the results of the final autopsy. Nick Barris. All right, so that's that. Let's go to another video file. Let's see. Now we're learning new details in the death investigation of Riley Strain. This afternoon, the 911 call from a Tennessee barge worker has been released. It's the moment the worker found the body of 22 year old Mizzou student Riley Strain in the Cumberland River in Nashville two weeks after he went missing. Nick Barris has more. The autopsy, of course, was only made possible after a river worker spotted the body in the Cumberland two weeks after Strain disappeared in downtown Nashville. My company works. They're trying to tell people that this river is dangerous or strong current or something. So this is kind of the same kind of file that it was. Let me see if I can go back. New file. Disturbing new details in the death of University of Missouri student Riley Strain. The 22 year old's body was recovered from the Cumberland River in Nashville last Friday two weeks after he went missing during a night out with friends. Tonight, we've learned some disturbing details about how he was found. We've learned he was found without his pants, his wallet, or the cowboy boots that he was wearing the night he vanished. Surveillance video captured some of his last known steps on March 8th after he left the downtown bar where his fraternity brothers were. Uh, they were all partying together there. It was about eight miles away from where his body was found. His disappearance mobilized an army of loved ones and strangers alike banding together to look for signs of Riley before the search came to a tragic end. A preliminary autopsy found no signs of foul play in his death, but the family is not completely satisfied tonight. They have ordered a second autopsy with even more tests that will potentially give us more insight into what happened. And joining us now, family friend, uh, Chris Dingman. Uh, Chris, thank you for coming on the show again. Um, I, I understand that Riley has been returned home. His funeral will be happening on Friday. So we're obviously thinking of you all right now, and I, I can't imagine how difficult all of this has been. But I, I want to ask you about this second autopsy and some of the new information uh, you've learned. What, what's new here? Uh, the family did have a second autopsy, actually in Tennessee, following the uh, Metro Nashville autopsy. Uh, from a private individual company that does that. Uh, the, the original autopsy come out just like theirs did with, you know, no obvious signs of trauma, as in weapons, uh, guns or knives or et cetera. Uh, but they were able to do a little bit more testing on specific items. Uh, one thing that threw the family for a loop was, uh, you know, the coroner going on record with uh, a news person in Nashville stating about the lack of water in his lungs. Uh, it raises more questions. You know, uh, I, I'm not a crime drama person by no means. So that's the coroner say, told somebody else on the news, no water in lungs. Means, but usually water in the lungs uh, means that, you know, they were alive when they went into the water. So 
More questions. Uh, we hope we're going to get some answers with the toxicology. Uh, you know, I just I just hope that this doesn't get swept underneath the rug because the family deserves more more answers than we have. What about the boots, Chris? Tell us what you've learned in terms of what uh, Riley was wearing and what he wasn't wearing when he was discovered. Uh, Riley, we were we were told, which blew the family away. It actually went out on social media, and I screenshotted it and sent it to our our war room and was like, who in the world is this? Who is releasing this information? Because at the time, certain family members didn't even know about that, uh, which really kind of blew us away. Not sure how they got that information. Once again, more one more question. But uh, yeah, unfortunately, the only thing that was found with him, uh, as the police stated in the report, was the watch and the shirt. Uh, everything else was not with him when he was found. And if you can describe the boots that he was wearing, because that could end up being significant. Uh, his mother was pretty sure they were Justin's, and they were a square nose style cowboy boot, uh, kind of a flat color. Uh, once again, the jeans were, I think, uh, buckle is what the jeans were. Uh, we already knew about the Michael Kors billfold. You know, there's specific things that we've been out in front of this entire time looking for in case this did come up. So uh, we're hoping now that maybe that they will come up so we can get more answers. So his cowboy boots were not on when he was found and his jeans were not on and his wallet was missing. Do you know, Chris, if he was wearing a belt? That I, I do not know, uh, unfortunately, but uh, in one of the pictures we went back and looked at, I, I'd always preach to the boys about keeping their billfold in their front pocket. Just to be in in clubs, it's real easy to get pickpocketed. And the one picture where the boys are all together outside, if you look in the right front pocket, we're pretty sure that's where he had his billfold. So the billfold should have been secured in his pants. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have those answers right now. Last time we spoke, you mentioned that police had told the family, this was right after his body was discovered, that there were still some people that they wanted to talk to. We know there's a, like a homeless sort of camp in that area. Um, have they been able to talk to those people? Have you learned any more on that front? We have not been notified. Uh, actually, one of the people of interest, uh, an hour, a little bit after an hour Riley was found, I was back at that scene and just happened to see that person. And so we had a group of volunteers that kind of followed the gentleman. We called the police, uh, let them know that we had found him because we hadn't been notified they had talked to yet and was told by the police that, you know, that was no longer a person of interest. They had somebody else they were interested in. But we know from the homeless people that lived there, that was the person that was supposedly up on the road uh, when Riley fell into the bushes or whatever happened, you know, and he yelled back down that, you know, this was just somebody that had been drinking. It was OK. So once again, a little more confusion. Uh, I just I hope that the ball hasn't been dropped on this. There's there's numerous people in the videos at the detention center that coincide with the police officer's body cam and a time stamped where they show up on footage still walking north. I strongly believe and it may just be a, a love family one knowing that wanting some more answers that. I think there's somebody out there that knows what actually happened that night, and we would love for him to come forward. You know, and we, we need some more info. Thanks so much for watching. Go to. So that the News Nation has been on this. I think so many of these other reporters have, have covered the Riley strain, Ashley Banfield, a lot of others. It's I mean, it's all over the news. It's really incredible. I've never seen this much attention to one of these types of cases uh, before which is really good. Okay, let's see. I think I've got more videos. That was uh, So this is a follow-on to that same uh, recording. This is a guy, Bobby Chacon. I think XFBI. With us, we appreciate it. I appreciate you guys for keeping Riley's uh, thoughts and prayers and, and keeping the story relevant till we get answers. Yeah, you got it. Okay, for more on what the new details mean for the investigation, uh, joining us now, Bobby Chacon, a former FBI special agent. Bobby, I'm glad we have you because I, I don't know how to process this in terms of Riley's, ha Riley's cowboy boots were not on. So he's wearing cowboy boots and his jeans were also not on him when his body was discovered in the river. What does that mean? Do boots typically, do cowboy boots typically come off in a situation like this? How do you, what do you make of it? Well, Brian, from, you know, I've, I've been in and around the water and recovered many bodies in the water in many different conditions. And I can tell you, it's not natural for someone that has cowboy boots on and jeans. In other words, they didn't come off because of the water. They did not 
I mean, anybody that's worn cowboy boots know they're not easy to get off. Sometimes you need help from a second person to get off. So I think that the fact that the boots are off, the pants are off, that that in and of itself as an investigator makes me very, very cautious about declaring this just an accident. Um, th th those things don't happen naturally. Boots just don't come off when you fall in the water. Other shoes, possibly the water can loosen them up, but real cowboy boots would not just come off because he's in the water for a certain period of time. Um, and so the fact that the, the pants were missing and the boots were missing really kind of um, sets off some alarms for me as an investigator. So do you think that police should continue to investigate this? I mean, try to find the witnesses, the people who are out there? Oh, absolutely. I, I mean, everybody that was at a bar in that on that strip should be interviewed. Every homeless person in that area should be interviewed. I mean, uh, you know, this is their job. This is Your job is to keep the public safe. And if there's somebody out there that may have caused this to happen to Riley, then it's incumbent upon them to make sure. Um, and when in doubt, you have to continue an investigation. You don't close it out on a probably you keep it going until you can definitively prove that it was an accident or it wasn't an accident of course if it's not an accident you have to keep going until you can find who's responsible for it so yeah. so you just you, there's enough here i think to continue the investigation certainly yeah and i'm just thinking about my question if he was wearing a belt i mean i didn't think of it until that moment but that does seem relevant i'm just thinking if i've got my jeans on with the belt they're much much harder to come off absolutely and you know if someone you know, I hate to say it, but when you have a homeless population in that immediate vicinity, you know, you, you might have someone that's wearing those shoes or those boots or wearing that belt. And so every piece of item that's missing from him needs to be looked into and, and, and found if possible. And so, you know, because they that, that's a scavenger type thing, even yeah. if the, even if they did, even if whoever did this discarded that stuff, somebody else could pick it up and use it because that's what people. Right. Where are they? Where are his pants? Where are his shoes? Why hasn't somebody found them when looking for him? Where's his wallet, right? He had, I think they said it was a Michael Kors wallet. Where's his phone? These are these are suspicious. This is evidence of some kind of foul play. This is just, should all have been found. In so many of these other cases, those things are found by where the police are, are meant to think the body goes in the water. So you'll see them stacked or like the phone will be found with a wallet, which is really strange. But... The, this police chief is full of baloney. Nashville PD is bear. Uh, this is going to be a huge embarrassment. People that live on the street do. They scavenge. And so, you know, I, I would be soaking that area with, with police. I would, do, I would be doing person-to-person -person interviews of everybody that's out there. Well, let's just hope that uh, that's what's happening behind the scenes right now. The, the, the family doesn't seem like they've been informed of that, but hopefully that is what, what's ongoing. Uh, Bobby Chacon, thank you. Right under the right. Everybody give me a thumbs up if you're ready. ready. And we're just uh, getting in the process of get ready here for this news conference. They've just arrived on scene to give us the latest on this recovery. This morning we have a uh, unfortunate update for you on the Riley Strange search. Chief John. Sorry, that audio wasn't very good. I'll bring up the Chiefs thing. So you can see it in full. Like they're not they're they're not relating it. So Oh my gosh, I have to warn you. This is about a footage captured from the surveillance just before Riley Strain went missing. Video at the end of this video. I don't, I don't know what to make of this video. It is strange. It has to be looked into, but it's basically somebody carrying another person, it looks like, on that the same video angle where Riley was supposed to have been seen. And wait till you see at the end what I saw. So this is a different bridge view camera that they believe allegedly this was the scooter in the Riley video. You see Riley perhaps speak to the homeless man, which they've already interviewed, and Riley walks on. But then you see a little bit later that these potential people from the scooters are carrying something very heavy. And I don't know if they're assisting them or it looks like they're carrying something off into the woods, off to the side. 
So that's that. Um, let's see, video file. Let's let's see this. See how little he says. This is only four minutes long. I've shown this before, but he's he's not divulging some of these facts to the public. So he's leaving you to believe that there's no foul play. This is a preset, in my opinion. This is a preset statement. They knew if this was going to happen, they were going to lay this out. And they weren't going to divulge important pieces. No pants, no boots, no phone. But his bank card's found weird. These haven't been recovered, by the way. And not on his body and not recovered. This morning around 7.28 a.m., we received a call uh, from a worker on uh, 61st Avenue uh, at a company that adjoins the uh, Cumberland River that had been searching for... Uh, anything that would uh, pop up on the river, um, especially looking for a Raleigh strain, if he would uh, surface here. As they were removing um, an object from the river, uh, they saw, they noticed uh, what appeared to be Raleigh strain um, pop up. Uh, the fire department uh, was called in, um, retrieved the body from the river. Um, the medical examiner's office uh, reviewed the body and we confirmed uh, that it is uh, Riley Strain. Uh, the family uh, has been contacted. Uh, that if there are no signs of foul play. No signs of foul play. Yeah, there are. Where's his pants? Marks? At this time, according to the examination here. At according to the, who's the examiner? Or what, what's going on? Did you see the body? At the uh, riverbank. Uh, is... Somebody needs to find this guy, Brian or Bridal, who found his body and ask him questions. But well, I'll show you where he works. I mean, they said it right there at the beginning on the uh, call to the dispatcher. Strain still had the shirt on that he was wearing, uh, so they had to watch. And other identifying factors that helped us identify who he is. I want to say uh, to the family, uh, my heart and prayers go out to you all. Uh, for this very unfortunate and tragic uh, incident. I also want to say thank you to the Nashville community and the outpouring. I have the I have people are desert like talking about these people, the credit card. I actually do have that audio. I don't know if this is the correct copy, but I will play this. And uh, see you this. were out searching along the banks of the Cumberland River and you found Riley's bank card. Uh, first of all, when did you find this? It was over the weekend, yes? Yes, my friend Anna and I went out Sunday. We actually just met that day. That morning we met over TikTok, and she's like, can I come join you? And hmm, they met over TikTok. That's weird. And I said, absolutely. And I think we went down by at 9.30, and by 12.40, we had found that card. Okay, you found it under some leaves. The big question, why didn't police find that card? This was more than a week after Riley disappeared. Yeah, I can't answer that question i wish i could i also don't want to put blame on them as much as i do want more support from them for this case absolutely brandy you said um, you, you met this person who you were searching uh on tiktok there are a lot yeah. of people who are rallying on tiktok to try and solve this case absolutely um i i've been going out since tuesday and wednesday my friend riley and i same name coincidentally started doing tiktok lives while i was searching because i was by myself to like have people see the terrain. Maybe people in Missouri could see the terrain and see what we were going through. Um, and Anna, my friend, happened to see it and messaged me and came down. And I'm so happy she did because her and I together were brave enough to be able to go all the way down that embankment. And now we feel like we're professionals at it. Um, we're very grateful that we did it. And we were very excited to find the card, but now we just feel like we have so many more questions and it's just given us so much more determination to show up here every single day. Brandy, very quickly, explain why this has caught fire so much on TikTok, why so many people have become so passionate about helping solve this case. I honestly don't think I can answer that question. I was not like a TikToker before this happened. I had mm -hmm. a few followers um and then we found the card and things have just kind of blown up in that aspect but i okay i'm gonna try to play this video i'm gonna i have to tinker around with my audio but i'm gonna try to play it give me one sec let's see what she really says 
they're red with red with the smiley foam gal. Yeah, they've been around all together. There's pictures of all of them together. Smiley foam gals. Hold on just one sec. Audio speakers. Okay, I'm gonna try to play this. Present your screen. Let's see if this plays. Let's see if I can get the audio to play. And hopefully get to, this will lead please to a more narrow search and hopefully get answers for Riley's family. I just met up with Brandy today. Like I found her through TikTok and it doesn't make sense that something so public like I, I feel like people should be here people should be looking on sunday social media connected two nashville women in the search for missing mizzou student riley strain and it didn't take long for them to come across a major discovery his debit card she yelled i found his card yeah i did and we immediately and my stomach dropped and then my innate reaction was to be like let's keep looking. Like, I didn't know what to do. She's yeah. like, well, let's call somebody. And I was like, well, let's keep looking. Police confirmed on Twitter Sunday afternoon the bank card did in fact belong to Riley. Brandy Bainan, who has been searching the area since Tuesday, hopes this will lead to an even bigger search along the Cumberland. I want the Tennessee Bureau of Investigations to be involved. This needs to be involved as a criminal case right now, not just a missing person, in my opinion just to make sure we are crossing off everything that we need to cross off. Both of these searchers encourage others to do what they can to assist in the search for Riley. The fact yeah. that I could come out here yeah. one day and, and myself yeah. find the card. And look for a blue wallet, look for brown boots that are flat toed, a size 15. Those are big boots. That's going to be hard to miss, you guys. Above all, they don't want to see the case go quick. How did she know all that stuff? This is what a, a week after he went disappearing. Maybe they knew that that information was out in the media about his boots. I don't know, but to know or think that they're missing, yeah, that's weird. Bainin wanting to share this message with Riley's family, their faces and Riley's face. I'm seeing every time I close my eyes. I haven't been able to sleep the last few days because I know his mom is not sleeping. Um, and I just need them to do what they can to assist in the search for Riley. The fact yeah. that I could come out here yeah. one day and, and myself yeah. find the card. And look for a blue wallet, look for brown boots that are flat toed, a size 15. Those are big boots. That's going to be hard to miss, you guys. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty strange. Um, let me go through some of these. Let me reset my... Uh, my audio try to get this to go through some let's see check one two yeah it's still here. um yeah so i'll go through some of these slides that i've got here <clears throat> and these are like the funny reports are just too rich it's like death of student student riley strain continues to appear accidental after prelim autopsy nashville pd says right that's the 25th Vanished without a trace, supposedly. Second, this is about the second private autopsy the family had. But Dingman, that was the guy we just saw talking, the family friend, who's the spokesperson. <clears throat> They're doing private independent company. See, it's a different like how they, they talked at the press conferences that he was found with his shirt and watch, but they leave out the fact that his jeans, cowboy boots, and wallet were not found. This is from yesterday. This is international. I think this is the independent in the UK. Riley Strain's family cast out on autopsy findings that there was no foul play in Missouri students' death. There's definitely foul play. His clothes are missing. He disappeared for two weeks. This is, I believe, TMZ. Family orders second autopsy. New details not adding up. Of course not. This is People Magazine. Just did tons of stories on Riley Strain. So they were on top of it. This is from today. Riley Strain's devastated family orders second autopsy, questioning initial finding of no foul play. Yeah, we quite question that. This is from today as well. It's Riley Strain's family fear foul play. A second autopsy reveal new details. Now we'll go into the to go to James case and what they found. I have all that stuff laid out. I'll read that to you. And then I had a posting just the other day. I did a post called What You Have to Believe. 
that if you think that it was an accidental drowning, which I'll, I'll read through that as well. <clears throat> this is Grifter. He writes, no pants, no boots, no water in lungs. Hashtag Riley Strain. The only people shocked by this are the ones who haven't been, pay haven't been paying attention for the last seven or eight years. I know some are turned off by the name SFK, but I'm glad people are finally starting to wake up. Yeah, the SFK term, there has to be an easier term for this whole situation. And something that, you know, you can take the smiley faces out of it, which are attached to some cases. And this one, the smiley face uh, phone case, but still a phenomenon, right? This is Digman basically reciting what we talked about. This is uh, just Jennifer Coffendaffer. I don't, this is a Dumbo. He could have if he went to urinate. Recall freezing water. Did he have a belt? How loose were his pants? Two weeks, eight miles. They could have gotten snagged. I don't believe someone de-pants him and threw him in the river. There is no evidence of that. There is no evidence of that. There's no evidence that his pants got taken off in the river. That's ridiculous in that river. She like talks up this whole thing, but uh, yeah, it's getting off. Where's his boots? It's not even his pants. Um, this is coffin daffer again. I did confirm with a family member there was no water in Riley Strain's lungs. I know this gives many pause, but there's a logical explanation per the medical examiner statement below. I know Riley didn't have pants or boots on, but being in a river with a strong current, it's not strong, sorry, for almost two weeks and over eight miles can cause a person's pants and boots to come off. The medical examiner said it was an accident and there were no signs of foul play. Where was his body for two weeks? Where's his phone? Where's his clothing? If I were the family, I would get a second autopsy for peace of mind. Thinking of Riley's family tonight. I can, this is Burton Staggs. I can personally say that current will take your clothing. In that current that we just saw, give me a break. My cousin was successful, water rescued. All of his clothing was stripped away except his shirt. Oh, believe it. The funny thing is this guy, this was a stream. Uh, last night I was was watching the Pascal here too. This is the property, the Holcim, right? H-O-L-C-I-M. This is where he was found and you found him. And this, this crew group or this company has kind of a sketchy background too like there's some sketchy things about it somebody found they pled guilty and were fined 778 million over payments to islamic state in 2022 so not that long ago and their headquarters are in zug switzerland and they do boots on the ground like uh it seems like it's like logistics or something wholesome 100 years of strength performance and passion so this Uncle Randy wrote to me, Riley Strain found at Wholesome Lafarge Cement Plant. Properties closed off. Guilty for payments to ISIS 2022. William Dunn, 18, vanished 2 a.m. after drinking. Found at Wholesome Property Pond, 2008. I don't know. I haven't confirmed that. I couldn't find it. Lots of bizarre deaths on their properties. Weird. This is my one of my favorite. Inside Edition writes the title, No Foul Play Suspected in Riley Strain Deaths So Far. Report. <laughs> what a joke. And this is where his body is found, where he's last seen. Like, he literally disappeared out of the bar at 9.30 and then literally, well, left the bar at 9.30, then literally disappeared 9.55, no phone. Caleb Harris, too. There was some kind of weird thing going on with his phone. He's missing out of Corpus Christi. They haven't found his body yet. Disappeared 3 a.m. This is a guy the councilman calls for downtown safety overhaul. Following Riley Strain's death, his name is Jacob Coopin. Yeah, well, if somebody's abducting people, you might have a different take on things. He thinks fencing is going to solve it. It's not going to solve it. Metropolitan Nashville Police Department Chief John Drake said at a news conference that Strain likely fell into the river, and there's no other evidence that suggests anything other than that scenario. Yeah, right. He fell in and his boots came off. This was the transsexual person. It's almost a year ago. Audrey Hill, whatever his or her real name is. They don't even publish their real name. I don't know if that's their real name. Killed six people in Nashville. And so I'm kind of uh, 
just showing how similar this case is to the Dakota James case. 2017, like I followed that case from beginning to end. It's hard to believe. I've seen so many cases. But the family was in kind of the same position. Dakota James, super suspicious, missing 40 days. Huge, you know, search. Same thing happened with, with Riley Strain. I'd search, helicopters, whole bit. So this is his mother, Pamela. She writes on Facebook. The James family does not accept this. We uh, will be requesting all materials and having a second opinion done and everything. This was not an accident. Dakota was murdered. Pittsburgh, you need to start opening your eyes. People are getting hurt on your watch and you aren't doing anything about it. Media, we appreciate everything, but wish you had at least allowed us time to call the family. You must have been on the phone the exact time we got called that they told you first. This is disrespectful. But there's a really good article about this. Um, it was... This is um, this is the Allegheny County District Attorney Stephen Zapala. The evidence indicates he may have fallen into the water at that time of year with the water temperature. You have only a couple minutes before you go into shock, and that's that. No, it's not. I'm swimming in cold water all the time. This is what they're telling the public. This is literally a quote from the District Attorney Stephen Zapala about uh, Dakota James. Dakota's family attempted to report him missing the following day when they could not get in touch with him and when he did not show up for work. Police did not accept their missing person report for five days. When Pan James got the call that her son was missing, she says she immediately knew something was wrong. I thought Dakota was in trouble. I never would have believed that he would walk across the river and go down to pee and fall in, right? That's the same story they're telling about Riley Strain. I just knew something had happened. I honestly believe Dakota was picked up when he came out of the alley. She's probably right. During the searches, Pam learned something from Dakota's friends. He was possibly was drugged, and someone tried to abduct him six weeks before, said Pam, right? So there's uh, elements of this Riley Strain being drugged. It's not really clear he, that he how much he had to drink before he got to the Luke Bryan bar, but apparently they were pre-gaming pre with his frat bros, and there were other bars that he was in. Retired New York City police detective Kevin Gannon thinks Dakota was drugged again the night he disappeared. I believe he was drugged like all our other victims, abducted off the street, held for a period of time before they killed him and then placed him in the water. Forty days after he disappeared, Dakota's body was found in the Ohio River on March 6, 2017. Investigators believe Dakota's body traveled through a dam for over 10 miles before it was discovered. The Allegheny County Medical Examiner ruled Dakota's death an accidental drowning. You got to watch this. Like, uh, if you're a sensitive stomach, I wouldn't see his kind of autopsy pictures, but uh, they're they're very telling, in my opinion. Dakota was an athlete and swim team captain, and his family do not believe he could have drowned. They told the Pittsburgh Post Gazette in 2017 that Dakota was not an inexperienced drinker, and there's no way he could have been so intoxicated that he accidentally fell in the river. Info from the Oxygen Special says James's body, however, had almost no visible damage, which was highly suspicious because it had traveled through heavily trafficked river. The smiley face was found spray painted on an underpass where James's body was discovered. And so then, like, you can see his body supposedly in the river 40 days, like he should have been damaged or something going on. It doesn't make any sense to me, never has, Pamela told Oxygen. Once we learned that the case was closed, it was very disappointing. I don't feel they ever wanted to look further into the possibility that there could be foul play. Hmm, sounds like Riley Strain. I know 100% in my heart that someone did something to Dakota. Dakota's autopsy report was examined in the oxygen special. And Dr. Cyril Weck, remember him from Aunt Diane, was brought in to assist. The host of the oxygen special, Kevin Gannon and Anthony Duarte, and their team were then able to review the official police reports along with Dakota's autopsy and recovery photographs. In one of the photographs of Dakota's neck, Gannon noticed suspicious marks, which had not been noted anywhere in the written autopsy report. Gannon and Dr. Gilbertson brought the documents to consulting forensic pathologist Dr. Cyril Wecht to see if he could discern what caused the injuries on Dakota's neck. Dr. Wecht concluded the marks were strongly suggestive of and entirely consistent with a ligature having been applied around the neck. This death may have been due to ligature strangulation, right? So something they found wasn't on the written autopsy report. And they found a picture of it too. And the, the, guy, the medical examiner was from another country, just like in Nashville. So a lot of this stuff is politicized, guys. I'm letting you know, like, especially in these uh, urban areas, 
politics is influencing a lot of police work, in my opinion. Dr. Uh, Wecht also noted a distinct difference in the coloration of the fingernail beds of the fourth and fifth fingers on both the right and left hands, which certainly would be consistent with someone reaching up and trying to release the pressure from a ligature that is being applied around their neck. Wecht says there was no internal damage to the neck structure as reported in the autopsy report. So I'm not able to say he was strangled to death, but there was something around the neck. There was very little decomposition internally and externally. It does not look like a body that has been in the river for seven weeks, Wecht said. Pam James also points out there were no scratch marks on Dakota's face or hands. Gannon added, there's no way a body could travel 10 miles through a dam 40 days and be that pristine. It's impossible. I've seen hundreds of these cases. I'm telling you, it doesn't make sense. There's nothing on the body to suggest he'd gone through a dam. His body wasn't swollen. He couldn't have been in the water for 40 days. Allegheny County District Attorney Stephen Zapala believes the marks we just spoke about would have been dried blood that washed off during the autopsy. There are two pictures, Zapala said. One where blood came out of the nose and mouth and pooled around the neck. There was a second set of pictures where the neck is clean and there's no ligature marks. And that's what the medical examiner is telling me, too. Pam James refuses to believe that. <clears throat> the, you tell me he was in the river 40 days, and that how, how doesn't that wash off? He comes out of the river, has ligature marks, and then you take him to the medical examiner's office and wash off. Dry blood doesn't stay on you when you're in the water 40 days. And why does he have pooling in the fingers? I don't believe that. Dakota's family had him cremated, so there's no way to conduct another investigation into his death. And now I regret all that. I trusted the system, and now I have to live with the regret of that. Officially, the Allegheny County District Attorney's Office, Zapala says, it's a homicide. It's an open file, but it's not being treated as a criminal homicide. In other words, there's no active investigation unless new evidence is found. Meanwhile, Allegheny County Medical Examiner's Office, Dakota's death remains listed as an accidental drowning. So that's from 2017. And this is a picture of his body. It's in pretty good shape. This is supposedly in the water for 40 days. And this is supposedly pooled blood. This isn't a ligature mark. It's pooled blood from a body floating in river. Like, you just strange credulity. Like, you just cannot believe it. It's just a bunch of baloney. So that's my slides. I mean, there's, there is a lot of problems. Um, a lot of problems with this case. And I've kind of detailed them in my um on my on my twitter page and i kind of i was actually kind of a twitter file i'll share it with you i'll read it into the record because i think it's pretty good but it really got passed around i think i have like eighty thousand downloads of it now or eighty thousand shares and it happened right after this uh disappearance and so let me see if I can find this. Let's see if I can bring this up. Does anybody have any questions or anything? I can try to answer. So, I mean, you can read my book. I've just published a 400 page book on all this stuff. It covers all a lot of the cases. And uh, let's see if I can bring that up. This is what the title. I mean, if people see me posting this around, this is the book cover. So. This is titled The Smiley Face Killers Investigating Suspicious Water Deaths of College Age Men in the US and the World. So it's happening all over the world. So um it's it's really sad. And it's a lot of cases, so many. The people are somebody is uh, hunting for people at night, just like people hunt for women, somebody's hunting for college age men. But I'll read this into the record. It's uh yeah, I think it's 87.9, 87,000 views. One, FYI, if you believe that Riley Strain accidentally fell into the water and drowned, you have to believe the following. A, or one, Riley was kicked out of the brine bar after one drink. He made it past bouncers into the bar, but was kicked out after one drink. Two, he walked toward the Cumberland River to either go take a leak or was accidentally headed the wrong direction. You have to believe he was very intoxicated but also sentient enough to want to take a leak outside of the range of CCTV cameras. Three, you also have to believe that the people wandering around and caught on CCTV at the river's edge after Riley disappeared isn't suspicious and not worth finding out who they are. 
Four, you have to believe that Riley was somehow compelled to take his bank card out of his wallet and leave it on the rocks before he fell into the water and disappeared for 14 days. Five, you have to believe he was so drunk but able to get, somehow get out of his wallet, get out his wallet and remove his bank card, that he waded out into the Cumberland over six feet to get to a depth where he could drown. The Cumberland doesn't have these drop-offs. It's a very slow river. It's cold, but you have to, to get out to like a six feet, you have to wade out. You don't just have some kind of crazy drop off. So the notion that he fell off, rolled over rocks for 10 feet, then had six more feet to get out of the water. It's not believable. Six, you have to believe that he magically disappeared for 14 days with no cell phone ping and no body after an extensive water search involving radar boats and helicopters in the air. Seven, you have to believe that before he tripped and fell and then waded into the Cumberland to drown and disappear that Riley hid or destroyed his phone. Police have not told the public the location of his phone and or if it was on his person. Eight, you have to accept that all of this happened without witnesses on a busy Friday night in downtown Nashville. No passerby or drivers informed police they saw Riley go over the edge or walk down to the river. Nine, you have to believe that his disappearance after leaving Luke Bryan's bar at 930 to when he was last seen at 10 was random. Ten, you have to accept that Riley was found 14 days later and that his body just popped up as the police chief Blake told the media in a four-minute-long public statement. You have to accept that he magically appeared in the Cumberland, which was being watched minute by minute, right, in the morning, right? So if body's dumped at night, and then he's noticed right at morning at 7.30. Pretty strange. 11, you have to accept that the discovery of his bank card by members of the public who met on TikTok isn't curious at all. 12, you have to accept the explanation from the Nashville PD that there is no evidence of foul play is good enough an excuse to stop any additional investigation into the strange disappearance and death of Riley Strain, even though no one saw him go in the water. 13, you have to accept what the police are telling the public with no additional Q&A with the media and the public. Where was his phone? What was, on, was it on his body? What was the condition of the body? Did it look like he was in the water 14 days? Any injuries? You can't accept what they're saying to the public, by the way. You have to accept that Riley Strain's body traveled downstream eight miles from where he was last seen while evading sonar equipment. If his body was on the surface, someone would have seen it with that many eyes on the river. Did he travel underwater for eight miles? 15, you have to accept that the disappearance of Riley Strain is not part of a larger pattern of young men disappearing out of urban areas to later be found in water with no one witnessing them go in like Riley, and it's just an unfortunate tragedy. You have to believe that the last people believed to be was Strain before his disappearance, according to this report, were never found by police or revealed to the public. Quote, he said he didn't head closer to the street to check on Strain since somebody was already there. This is a, the last homeless person who saw him. 17, quote, I yelled up. They said, he's just drunk, he's okay. Quote, who are those people who yelled back? This is from a Fox News thing. Who are the people with strain outside of CCTV camera view? To my knowledge, they were never identified. The public just has to accept it. 18, you have to accept that no one in authority or the local media, to my knowledge, tied the disappearance of Riley Strain to a larger pattern of disappearing college-age men later to be found in water known as the Smiley Face Killers phenomenon. 19, as coined by authors and researchers Gilbertson and Gannon and written about in their book Case Studies in Drowning Forensics. 20, you have to accept that this strange person with the Smiley Face cell phone case oddly shows up at Police Chief Blake's press conference in the morning at the area where Riley's body was found is perfectly normal. You will have to, 21, you will have to accept what the medical examiner will say about whether Riley even drowned or had injuries to his body or whose body whose body wasn't in the shape consistent with someone in the water for 14 days. 22, even though the cases of Chris Jenkins, Patrick McNeil, and Dakota James et al. conclusively show, often after a third-party autopsy, injuries to the person not disclosed by peace, police to the public or family members, 23, you have to accept that the over 300 college-age men I've covered in this book, and I mean all of them, had some strange compulsion, like Riley Strain, to walk away from their friends who, while thought to be drunk, then fall into water to drown with not one witness is normal. 24, you have to accept that any follow-up investigation is not important, as you think he tripped, fell, and drowned, even though there's no actual real-world evidence of that happening. I'll repeat that sentence. You have to accept that any follow-up investigation is not important as you think he tripped, fell, and drowned even though there is no actual real-world evidence of that happening. You would ignore one of the original investigator Gannon's advice when a body is is found. 25, you wouldn't do what Gannon recommends in the appendix, appendix H 
of this book, Case Studies in Forensic Drownings. Yeah, so I, I don't want to read all that out. 26, you wouldn't check to see who else's cell phone pinged in the location where Riley was last seen. You, the family, or the public would not find and ask the person who found his body very, very important questions. Then there's this guy's analysis and the adding up of this. Um, I mean, these guys, this guy's on TikTok. These guys are really sharp. But this driver said, like, I'm baffled. The search for Riley Strain, nothing is adding up. So there's like, a, I can put links to the show on there. But it's just such a joke, like how many yeah i know pat brown yeah i've saw that's i have heard statement like she's not even accepting any of that yeah interviews they need to go back and interview a lot of these people absolutely there's no question at all um yeah so this uh case is still ongoing we'll probably get more information as things go uh, hopefully people will continue to investigate and investigate some of these other suspicious, interesting characters that are around. Let me see if I can find this one guy's analysis. It's really good. It's, uh, um, it's this, this guy, I can't remember his name, but he followed the case from the beginning and, uh, he, he just did a good, really good analysis of, like what's wrong with the case? Why it doesn't add up? Just like a very clean, straightforward analysis of it. But yeah, I mean, this is like the area where he supposedly fell in the river. From from the river, I think that this this view is actually kind of interesting because it just shows like how much ground you have to cover to get in the river. Like it just doesn't make any sense. Let me see if I can find this potential. Yeah, here's where he's supposed to go. So he fell down and then rolled down that embankment. Yeah, it's not it's not probable. It's just not there's no way that happened. Um I guess I can't find that file. So unfortunately, let's see. Where is this guy? Oh, I, we can I can play this this guy. I mean, these guys are professionals. Like you have to. Let me see if I can get this to play. Anyway, I don't. I'll, I'll try to play it on another another stream. But thank you for listening. It's been an hour, and hopefully, people will continue to investigate this very very suspicious disappearance and death of Riley Strain. Thank you very much.